Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. I'm joined by the original meatball, Rich Stambolian. <laughs> That's it. That's the best you got. I would I would prefer the original Dadabada. <laughs> Whatever, whatever that I, means. I don't even know what happened. I'm so sorry. I, I don't feel great today. I had a long night. Uh, but Rich is feeling great. I am right? feeling pretty fantastic. So uh, are you ready to do this? Uh, oh, man, a lot well, of news. I want to distract you from how you feel um, so we can we can get through this next six hours of the Mat Men podcast this week. <laughs> the original Dadabada. People very much like that original <laughs> intro that I had for you. <laughs> keep that in there. Just keep it as silly as possible. You know, like we were going to do the show in studio, but I, I, I'm kind of not feeling great. And mm. I took a test. I'm negative now, but let's see what happens tomorrow. But I kind of like I'm a little coffee again. And yeah. I'm like, All right, stay home. We'll do this remote today. So I also Man. have a thousand things going on. We got that Global Hair Loss Summit thing that I'm, that Suncast and I are running. Oh, yeah, that's right. I that forgot that year. you guys still do that yeah. uh, con consistently, you know? Every year. So we got that this weekend. So we got to prep for that. I got to, I got to, I'm slammed. I am slammed this weekend. This whole week I was slammed. Very interesting meeting I had yesterday. Rich knows yes. a little bit about this. Um, very interesting. So we're, we'll we'll get into it as to why it was interesting. But a lot going on in the world of professional wrestling. Rich, take the lead on this. All right, guys. So we're going to start out heavy with some news here. A new Wall Street Journal article says Vince McMahon is facing new legal demands, but uh, quote unquote, intends to make a comeback to WWE. I'm booing that. Um, I think a lot I'm not, of people are. listen. I'm not a fan. I think a lot of people are. Um, it's very interesting. There's new possible lawsuits. Uh, Rita Chatterton's lawyers sent a letter on November 3rd asking for 11.75 million in damages. Why not ask for 12? Um, it might be it might be the cap or something like that. You know, mm, the where uh, suing. Yeah, and McMahon's attorney also received an email from a lawyer from a former spa manager who says that McMahon assaulted her at a California result resort in 2011. So this shit is This wild. is the second tanning salon incident, oh, right? Oh, boy. Yeah. Do you remember the first one? And everybody's like, no, nah, it didn't happen the way people, was, you know, there was a lot right. of defending him yeah. on that. Uh, essentially, he kind of was like, hey, would you mind taking taking a photo of me? And then, like, sort of scrolling and was like, oops, you know. Here's and then the he wanger. Said, you know, he did one of those. And yeah. I think he like like touched her and he was like, I'm just trying to have some fun, like <laughs> something absurd like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I have no idea if this is real or not. I know the reader chat, ch uh, the Chatterton stuff has been going on for 30 years. Uh, yeah. I believe she had taken some sort of money in a settlement or something like that in the past. You know, these are going to come up now that people are talking about it and they're more comfortable to talk about this. These things are going to come up. The big story, part of this uh, big story is that Vince has told people that he intends on making a comeback and he was given Jeez. bad advice regarding stepping down. And, Ugh. you know, early on, I was told this was a temporary step down mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. everything goes away. That was always how it was kind of put in to play yeah. when it was explained to me. But, you know, listen, I... I know, I know. Sean did a great job on on Fightful Select, and he reported mm -hmm. that you know he had spoken to a couple of people there, or a lot of people there, and essentially a lot of people don't want him, which is true. Uh, and, and some people that you would imagine would want him don't want him there. It, it's uh, it's it's a little bit of a calmer environment, right? What um, do you think of this? I. <laughs> I honestly like again, like you know, we we always we skew towards the positive on this show, and you know, we very rarely poo poo things. I'm poo pooing this. I don't think this guy should come back. You know, no, like it seems think... like everybody in the company is breathing easier, like you just said. You know, like this guy is not like the warlord in charge with these weird, dumb, dumb decisions. And I also think if he comes back, everybody's going to go back to their original names. The people who were fired are going to get fired again. <laughs> you know, like just very wonky stuff especially since like you know this is this would be a situation of like he's jay leno and uh triple h is conan o'brien and he where, comes in and takes over the spot again yeah yeah he wants <laughs> to get the tonight show back you know <laughs> i can't believe they did that yeah it, they didn't give him a chance at all he came back after a couple of weeks yep 
Really? I think it was maybe six or seven weeks. Something yeah, like something that. like that. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's almost the same situation. We're like, yo, this guy is actually planting the seeds for a better harvest, right? Yeah. And Vince coming back, I feel like would ruin it, you know, especially because if he comes back with like a weird, like old man, like fury, you know, <laughs> it's just like just gonna rip shit apart. Uh, I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> Oh man! What about theory. you? Do you do you want to see it happen? <clears throat> no, I think I think they're they're doing some really positive stuff now, and I don't think they'll be able to do that with Vince. You know, listen, yeah. and also at one point, do you want a seventy-something-year-old person running, you know, the ship for a giant media company? How, how great is SNL doing right now? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, how SNL, old is he now? You know, he's uh, up there. Yeah, Lauren's up there, but I think that's a different kind of machine. You know. I don't know. I think I think when you, you need you need to f- have a different perspective a little bit, and I think they're getting that now. Um, very interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's go into this Mandy Rose situation because I know this is going to take some time. So very very interesting. Yeah. On Tuesday, there, actually, let me just say this: there was a title match set up for New Year's Evil, right? Mm-hmm. With Roxanne Perez. They moved this match up to last week. Yeah, let me just double check here. Okay, they moved this thing up. They yes. Mandy drops the title. Yeah, and people people start speculating: is it because of her leaks? Now, mm-hmm. I, I don't. <clears throat> is it is it a leak if she's posting it on a paid service that anybody could buy? I I don't. I initially thought someone leaked her images. I didn't even understand what was going on here. Right. And then right. people say, no, 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 it's coming from her site. It's an OnlyFans. So it's not an OnlyFans. It's a fan time account. Right. And essentially, it's very much like an OnlyFans where you pay and her content is behind a paywall. And she would post uh, initially, she would post bikini shots, you know, like the thong shot, like fitness model yeah. shots. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think, you know, what seems to have happened is that she kind of fell down that 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 hole of, holy moly, I'm making so much money here. And it got a little bit more risque, yeah. the photos, and they became full on like lewds. Yeah. yeah and yeah. <clears throat> recently, uh, you know, like I, I people were very much aware this was going on. OK, apparently right. everybody was except for WWE. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh the people I've reached out to at WWE have said they had no idea this was the content she was posting. Uh and they it seems like the nail in the coffin was a shower photo shoot mm-hmm. with I guess her boyfriend, right? There was a shower I mean they're fully nude. You don't get to see parts, but it's covered, right? Right, right, right. It's like Skinamax. It's like Skinamax. And then there were um, some way more revealing images. <laughs> yes, to say the least. There's a lot of butthole being shown. I'll, I'll just tell you that. So, listen, I <laughs> she's making a killing, you know, Good for on her. there. Uh, the numbers I've heard are, are astronomical. Yeah. And she made a decision. And WWE made a decision to release her. Is WWE right into releasing her? Yeah, I think they are. I think there's a question mark at the end of that. You know what I, I mean? Okay, but I, you, you the comparison of posting videos of Trish Stratus and posting videos of stuff from 20 years ago, it's not an even comparison. Two, no, the, no, no, WWE's no. representation of her as being a sex symbol on TV is very different from posting essentially just, just nudity or stimulated sex. Simulated. Simulated sex. <laughs> it is stimulated, uh, too. I, listen, I'm not a freaking prude. I don't care. Like, my moral com- right. compass is not in, in involved in this. I don't give a shit what anybody does. Good for her. Make money. But no, no. Admit it. You are a big prude. I'm a huge prude. The, no, no, no. No kissing. You're like a Puritan. You are like one of the original Quakers <laughs> that came over here. And you're very... You run a tight ship, I got to say. <laughs> I, I am a Puritan, yes. I, and I want everyone to follow my way of life. No one else. It's a firm, it's a firm handshake no matter who you meet it's never a hug and a kiss it's just a <laughs> please remain four feet away from me extend your hand shake mine and, <laughs> and do you uh then... do you want to reconnect because your 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 video is like yeah i'll reconnect all right let's do that i'm just gonna go all right, 
So, I mean, listen to them. I, I get it. I get why she posted it. I get why she, how she's making so much money. She's a beautiful woman. Uh, she yeah, has this ability to make tons and tons of money. There we go. Much better. Thank you. So okay. she, she's doing what she decided to do. But the consequences are you're, you're working for a publicly traded company that has obviously has content partners. You sell toys to children. Right, right, right. Having somebody on contract represented on TV that also does that on the side, does that fit in the WWE narrative? No, it doesn't. So I do think they should have given her a talking to. You know what I mean? Like, if they're going to go that route, they and they've supported, like, people who have had, quote, unquote, leaks in the past, you know? Yes, but it's not a leak. It wasn't that someone stole yeah. it. it. It's that it's being sold for a I, lot of money. I do think they should have had a talking a, a talking to at first, you know. But at the same time, it's like you know what? Good for her. She's charging money. She's making a lot of money. Maybe what would talk. you What would you rather do? Would you rather make over six figures a year selling pictures of your butt, or throw your head onto six concrete? Six seven figures over seven figures. Wow! Or the throw the, your head onto a concrete floor <laughs> five yeah. nights a week. You yeah, know? I, no, no, no. She. I mean, the estimate like people are saying. I mean, she was making unbelievable money millions way more than she does on a wwe contract i could totally mm -hmm. understand why she would do it uh but you know here's the difference aew uh there are talent on there that have only fans uh tony storm i don't know if Tony's posting who else easy page van zandt page van zandt page i mean page shows a ton but yeah. i don't think i don't think tony does as much but like this was you know this what this passed the line i i would say mm -hmm. for sure uh though so the stuff that she's posting that i've seen crossed the line okay uh, for wwe yeah not for me i don't care yeah i, mean, I give a yeah. crap i mean Rick you are but all he wants i don't you care you are a puritan <laughs> i'm a puritan i care so much what do you make of this you think she should have been ter uh, you know fired for this or you think i think she, i think she should have been suspended and have a talking to and then come back sure. like make sure, sure why if if she agreed and was like if they were like listen take it down you know like we'll give you a little bump in pay we'll keep you off the air we'll suspend you for 60 days but take it down you know whatever yeah that's that's fine too sure. but you know my my my, my resp you know what i'm talking generally is about how people were like it, it, like how how can they even think about punishing her when right. they've done this and this and this? I'm like they don't do this. They don't show that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's, you know, it's presenting it's a little her hypocritical. as a, it is it. I, it's a little hypocritical, especially when you have a CEO who is mired in lawsuits full of allegations, who is now saying, yeah, I'm coming back. <laughs> you yeah, know, no, like, listen, I, I get it, right? There's so many different variables here, and there's so many different sides mm -hmm. to this argument. But at the end of the day, you are a, a contracted person to fulfill a role. Uh, you have to represent yourself outside of, of that role also in a positive way. Whatever that company guideline is, whatever morality clause they have, I don't know what it is exactly, but I'm sure WWE has a thing yeah. that says <clears throat> uh, you can't do that. Yeah, I'm sure it's also not a Disney-fied thing, you know, but also like you've heard these stories and we're not going to name names, obviously. I've heard these stories, too, where apparently like both behind the scenes locker rooms are very raunchy. Like, is, it, it's, yeah, is it? It it's not um yeah, it's not like uh it's not like it was twenty years ago with the drug use. Now it's just like it's a lot of uh a lot of risque, I think, you know? Yeah. But interesting stuff. <clears throat> I hope Mandy does tremendous. Listen, I think she'll be back. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. For she sure. had a great run in NXT. Mm -hmm. Uh but you know the big question, does she go to AEW? Is this a move for her to go to AEW? Impact. Goes to impact? I think so. But again, you have to like, I feel like as much as we and other fans want to fanboy guess stuff like that, it's ultimately obviously up to the performer. You know, like yeah. does does Mandy say, yo, I love wrestling so much, I need to go to AEW and I'll make X amount of money plus whatever money I'll make doing my OnlyFans style content, you know? Yeah. Or does she just like take a break, heal up? Do her thing. You know, if you follow her Instagram, she looks like she has the time of her life, like yeah. anywhere. You know what yeah. I mean? Listen, I, I, I think she's going to be fine. I, yeah, I don't absolutely. think Mandy, Mandy Rose is going to suffer any kind of financial hardship. Yeah. 
uh, because of this. But, you know, it, it, weird, weird way it played out. I didn't expect this to play out the way it did. Uh, the oh, big, yeah. big shocker is that nobody at WWE was aware of what she was posting, which I find, that, huge... I, I find that to be very odd. That's a so... huge shocker. <laughs> yeah, because they're so tight. Like, I, I, I know that they fu- – that, you know, there are people assigned to the talent social media and their entire job is a kind of like narc on them when they post something that is not company guidelines. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I guess nobody thought to pay the $25 a month to see what Mandy's doing on her site. Which well, is yeah, unbelievable, right? Isn't that unbelievable? Use a company card, get on there. But it's also like maybe I mean, listen, people... she's doing dick ratings. <laughs> I, you oh, know geez. what I mean? <laughs> like I got to I got to tell you, like do you think that that that's appropriate? You know what I mean? I, for for yes, a contract of her WWE contract of talent, not not in general cuz I don't care. Right. I'll do it for $50. I don't care. You'll rate you'll rate my deck? Uh, only yours. <laughs> Just mine. Mm, five potatoes. Stepping stepping out of the uh, the puritanical shadows. <laughs> you know what? Let me you know, like, uh, Come on. Let, let, let's uh, we got it. We got to look at this and laugh sometimes, you know. We got to be like, okay. She, she's making think, a killing here. It, it's fine. I bet you there were probably a few people who were like, yeah, listen. I know what you're doing. I'm not going to narc on you. You know, like there's probably that. I'm sure, also. yeah. I'm sure. You know, she seems like she's a nice person. Justice you know? for Mandy Rose was trending yesterday. Oh, boy. Like, I'm like, she's not in a, she's not in an Iranian prison, guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, plus also, I think it's a little hypocritical too, because she, I think she's getting over the loss of her brother who, who died tragically not too long ago. And also, wasn't she the victim of like, um, yeah, that, that, that kidnapping attempt, that crazy guy. Yeah. Yeah. So that like, insane. Ah. that was insane. Her. What? Who? Yeah, it was. No, that it was, was her not. and Sonya Deville. It was Sonya and her. That was just Sonya. No, no, no. She was in the house. No. Well, yeah. Uh, just listen. She she made a decision. She's gonna do great. I don't think anybody anybody's questioning. You know, Mandy Rose's future is financial uh, success. So weird story, man. Or you yeah. know what? She's the smartest. She she's smarter than anybody else, and she did this to get out of her deal again you, you know, know like who knows who knows like if she's like yeah, listen i'm making a million dollars right now i'm making more than uh what do they pay what do they pay you in nxt ten thousand dollars a year no she she gets paid well yeah. but not i mean she i from the number i heard it's like a couple million she's making from this so fascinating stuff real william regal has accepted a vice president position within wwe to start the first week in january He's going to be working with younger talent, and uh, this is exactly what Regal wanted. He's back into yeah. a very good position there. Uh, his son is there. Uh, very interesting, that, but that was a strange move. Very quick, another another weird move in that company. Well, I think he he probably had like some. I think I think Tony Khan is very loose. With his contracts, it seems, you know, where it's like he's not binding everybody to like a, you know, like this is what you have to do, like an ironclad deal like WWE has, you know, where like, you know, guys would get injured or whatever and they'd have to make up time on TV, et cetera, you know, like no days off, you know, emergency yeah. calls and all that stuff. You know, Regal probably had a good deal where he's like, listen, this is what I want to do uh, when my contract is up. I'm going to go hang out with my kid, blah, blah, blah. And of course, like, you know, he was arguably the best talent scout WWE has ever had, right? Yeah, probably. He was one of the best. One you know? of the best. Yeah. Like, look at all the guys that became stars because William Regal found them. You know, I think Kevin Owens, Johnny Gargano, you know, the list is like endless. I think Sami Zayn's on that list, too. You know? Very interesting. You want, Let's go into this Matt Riddle stuff because this, yeah. is, this is weird. Okay. Very. So, it was reported that Regal was suspended for failing. Uh, WWE's wellness policy. Yeah, Riddle was written off of WWE TV this month after an attack from Solo Sequoia. 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 <laughs> oh, welcome! It's a brand new 2023 Solo Sequoia. <laughs> uh, it was reported that he failed the, the the drug test, but now people close to him are denying this. Instead, he's taking time off because of pressure going through the divorce. Um, that divorce is, is a little messy too. And there's a lot of stuff in that divorce paper that, you know, the, mm -hmm. I guess the agreement, I, I don't know, divorce certificate <clears throat> or whatever, the agreement for the divorce. 
um, where he has to take random drug tests in order to see the kids. There's, it's not a good thing that they're going through with that divorce. But yeah, the original story is that he was told to go to rehab. Now they're saying, no, he's not going to rehab. He's taking time off because of the pressure of dealing with this divorce. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to make of this. Hey, listen, <clears throat> guy failed the drug test. It's his responsibility. Did he? He's, he's denying well, it. Okay. So what do you make of this? What do you make of this? What do you think happened? I or think, it, I yeah. think the truth is somewhere in the middle. Okay. I think the truth is somewhere in the middle with this, but you know, you've, you've heard the stories. So I, I mean, I, th right. there, there is truth to this for sure. Uh, I hope, I hope everything works out for him. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Very popular with the young people. Very popular. Uh, it looks like uh, WWE and New Japan have come to terms with an agreement for Carl Anderson to wrestle at Wrestle Kingdom 17. This makes me go a little bananas, to be honest with you. How excited are you? I'm so excited because I feel like this is going to be the invasion. This is this is this is when it happens, by the way. The, the real um, one, the one from 20 years ago that never happened. Yep. My, I want, my fan. Go ahead. I want Bill Goldberg to show up and, and, and all the WCW guys. The fanboy theories in my head are going through the roof because he's gonna he'll show up with uh, uh gallows right well he i don't know he'll show up with gallows let's say let's say maybe aj right this is very interesting especially because i i feel like we all thought he was gonna lose that title to uh, hikaleo i thought right? he was just gonna hand it in he wasn't even gonna defend it so him defending at Wrestle Kingdom 17 against Tamatanga. It's very interesting. I don't know how telling it is. WWE and th the 4th of January falls in the middle of a week, right? It's a Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. WWE canceled their what whatever show it was like the day one show. Yeah. Day one is not happening. Yeah. Right. So that's not happening. If and you also have Nakamura in Japan at some point for the um, Muda match. You have Asuka's in Japan right now. Is she? Like, yeah, she posted like a thing where she's like soul searching and said like she'll be in Japan for a while. And uh, she's hinting at like the return of Kana. Was very yeah, I saw she didn't have her makeup on, on and she's a little bit more serious now. So she's kind of right. adapting that Kana gimmick. So it kind of like me personally, I'm like, oh, this would be cool if Triple H did his fanboy shit and added a few extra elements to wrestle kingdom they'll make it back in time for smackdown right and you could set some cool stuff up right yeah, that's interesting I, I could see them doing gallows uh you know gallows showing up and aj's showing up they could do that uh that would be cool i think there's a lot of you know here this is a great example of life after vince mm. this would have yeah. never happened with vince yeah ever that you and he's booked to lose right so mm -hmm. wwe guys going to be on this New Japan show with AEW wrestlers on that show also, right. and the WWE right. guy is going to drop the title. Right, but also former WWE guys are going to be at that show, and I think that's like, Triple H is a smart dude, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I always think back to I want to say it was like maybe five years ago where they did the big show, a big show in Japan, and Triple H came out with the shield as that like was the, more than five years ago like the fourth member and the crowd went absolutely ballistic right i do think in the back of his head he's like yeah we can we can tear up japan like nobody else like we can do it big right oh you have all that stuff. i think yeah you're right 2018 five years ago yeah, yeah. <clears throat> four years ago so and you get a lot of former wwe guys there i personally think and this is a very very way out there i think ftr uh are gonna go back to wwe if triple e remains in charge i, I feel like so. they're gonna i think they're gonna drop those titles at wrestle kingdom they're gonna s let their contracts let up and then go back to wwe make a shit ton of money and be on like a bigger platform and used better you know what but i mean do you think they would be used better i mean that's a great question right mm -hmm. I, I if ftr has had the, the the run of their career this year um I don't think any tag team was booked as seriously as them. Uh, 
if they go to WWE, will they be in those type of matches? Or are they going to be running after uh, Braun Strowman and, and, you know, in these wacky matches? Victims of the Choo Choo Train? The victims of the Choo Choo Train. Will they become victims of the Choo Choo Train? <clears throat> I do think one thing that we've seen under the Triple H regime is that he actually cares about tag teams. And he's put <laughs> a lot of tag teams into the spotlight, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what they do. <laughs> so, also, let's go into the Sasha news, huh? Mm-hmm. Go into it, Rich. Sorry about that. Give me one second. I lost my notes. Um, again, former or current or who knows WWE talent, Sasha Banks uh, or she, Mercedes. She, she is not under contract. And the story that the deal kind of fell apart in the summer is true. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So she is appearing at Wrestle Kingdom 17, not per Dave Meltzer, not scheduled to wrestle, but is being paid more than Jericho got. And she's already penciled in for some New Japan dates in 2023. Um, and as per Fightful, her WWE departure was negotiated months ago. And she's free to start taking bookings on January 1st. Now, what do you make of this? I don't know. I, I know that Dave's reporting that she's not going to wrestle. But why would you pay over $100,000 for someone to appear on Wrestle Kingdom and not wrestle? Yeah. I mean, like, do you think she gets involved with the uh, Kyrie Sane match? I think so. I think they want to really make make the New Japan, you know, women's division be a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Sasha would be a great, you know, pop to that. Oh, for sure. Of, I, I, and, you know, we'll see what happens on January 11th because that's mm -hmm. a whole separate story here with Paige and the secret, you know, tag partner. Yeah, that's also very interesting. What if it's Mandy? <laughs> what if it's I mean, now, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I know that she's penciled in for some dates in 2023. I know that she, you know, she's been training in Mexico with Hoovy or training mm -hmm. with Hoovy. I don't know if it was in Mexico, but uh it, it, very interesting she also trademarked uh trademark filed for oh no that's the uh, next story sorry um she did file a bunch of trademarks for her name mm -hmm. i think listen if she could go to AEW, i think that's a great get, gig for AEW. do something there go to japan wrestle in japan also like what mox has been doing yeah you know what mox did for the for for new japan and what uh chris jericho did for new japan I, those were big deals oh yeah yeah Wrestle Kingdom is going to be interesting. And plus, you also have like the AEW talent on there. Who becomes uh, the first AEW world champion that also holds the IWGP world title? Oh, uh, yeah. That's a good question. Because that, that's going to happen. Not that I think know so? it, but I feel like it can, you know? So that also, like, we're going to fanboy out here for a minute. But let's say okay, this is my fanboy <laughs> fantasy. Yeah. Right? Okada beats um, Jay White. Okay. Right? All of a sudden, you hear Roman's theme song. Oh, right? my God. Points to Okada and goes, next year. And that's it. And then you have, like, a year. So it doesn't hurt anybody. Right? What Even do you think the odds of that happening are, Rich? One in, one in a 10 billion. I'll take it, though. Right? But how cool would that be? Um, a weird exhibition match between Roman and Okada. Like, as a fan, you want that. You want to see that. You know, like, why not? And Okada has said that in the past, that he wants to wrestle Roman. Um, yeah. I think Wrestle Kingdom needs eyes on it again this year, you know, because the last couple of years in New Japan have been good, but not phenomenal, right? You're going to have a lot of AEW talent on the show. You're going to have WWE talent on the show. You're going to have Ring of Honor talent on the show, plus like your staples of the New Japan roster. Yeah, wild. Um, very wild. It's almost like the first like all in kind of, you know, and I think there's going to be more cool stuff announced, you know, like the Kenny match is huge, like Kenny versus Osprey. That's really cool because I think both of us thought like maybe Kenny won't be coming back to New Japan. I like know? how everybody maybe. thought that they, they really don't like each other. Right. You know, and I'm like, no, man, they're doing business. I mean, everything. This makes a lot of sense. I, I, you know, Kenny returning to New Japan and doing Russell Kingdom again. I, that's huge. And I think that's that's really big for New Japan. Because yes. they've had a rough year, I, I think this is a smart move for them to bring mm -hmm. in a Sasha, Sasha Bank, uh, Mercedes, whatever you're gonna call her, uh, yeah. and bring in a Kenny and and do these interesting things. It's gonna bring in eyeballs, and that they need that right now. Moxley, to answer your question, I think Mox would be the first double title holder. I could see that, right? Like yeah. a 
big blow. Like either, let's say either Jay White or Okada would have a insane match with John Moxley, you know, put both belts on him. Ace of pro wrestling, right? Yeah. WWE file trademarks for King and Queen of the Ring, possibly setting up a return to the King of the Ring as a standalone event. I think that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, and AW has hired former WWE VP of Global TV Production, Michael Mansuri. He was slated to replace Kevin Dunn. He was there for, I think, 11 years. He knew that production system inside and out on how they how they do things and he left he didn't get fired but he left to go work for pat mcafee and after patty went to showtime boxing or something boxing for a little bit uh and now he's with AEW. this guy was supposed to be the next guy in charge if kevin left he would have been the guy <laughs> let's see how this changes AEW tv uh, might make though. it a, might make it a little tighter, right? Maybe. I mean, it's all production side side stuff. So I mean, right, the production right. is already already fine. It's just gonna kind of add a little bit more to it. But this is a very good get for them. They're they're building those missing pieces in that company. Yeah, and people like you know, it's it's interesting with like all this news coming out or whatever. Um, the company is still a baby. AEW. You Three know, years, so there's. Yeah. A, there's always room for improvement. And it's interesting now how like fans have kind of turned on them a little bit, you know, where it's like, oh, this is terrible. Well, the MJF and, stuff, the MJF stuff was the beginning. Actually, Cody leaving was the beginning. Okay. Uh, that was the beginning of the turn because people are like, well, Cody's leaving. What the hell's going on? And then mm-hmm. the MJF stuff rubbed people, a lot of people the wrong way. And the CM Punk stuff has really sucked the energy out. That, yeah, that really it, it really did uh, slow down the momentum that they had. Also, listen, you didn't have Kenny Omega on TV for eight months. You mm-hmm. did. Uh, Cody leaves. Mox is banged up. Mox needs to go. Uh, right. You know, you're 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 kind of putting in missing pieces here when it was never part of your original plan. Tony never envisioned what's what happened with CM Punk to happen. He had an outline for the next year for what he was thinking he would do with Punk. Adam Cole also. Adam, Adam Cole, Cole being out, Danielson yeah. getting banged up. You know, these are all uh, problems for sure. Yeah. These are all There's, problems. But I think they're in in that regard. They're they're kind of riding the ship because look at the last couple of weeks of programming where there is the heavy concentration on like your AEW originals. Yeah, but you need to present that in a. Uh, we'll we'll go into that with the, when we talk about the show. Yeah. All right. Where do you want to go, Rich? All right. So. Um, I guess we can we can talk about Raw a little bit. All right. It was an okay episode. Uh, Alexa Bliss is now the number one contender after beating Bailey. She teased a turn on Bianca when Bray Wyatt's logo appeared. Oh, she's controlled by imagery. Whoa. <laughs> uh, a ladder match was set up for all of the Miz's money between him and Dexter Loomis. That should be fun. Can I tell you how much I hate that they will do this to town where they pretend that the guy that's been on TV for 15 years that's highly successful at media and everything he's been doing has no freaking money that he's broke. Yeah. They just did that with Corbin too, remember? They did that with Corbin. They did that with Shawn Michaels. <laughs> yeah. They did that with Big Show. Uh, like, what is... Why? Who in the... Who at all believes at any level that The Miz has no money? I think it's believable for kids. I guess so. I guess you know it's where such like a they stupid, don't stupid easy story. Like it's a dumb storyline. Like a five or six year old doesn't have the cognitive uh, wherewithal to say like that's horseshit, man. These guys are paid a lot of money to wrestle for our entertainment. <laughs> I would, <laughs> you know? I would have said that. Yeah, you you know what you you were a very astute puritanical kid. <laughs> you would I was tell a you, puritan. You, yeah, you would tell your parents to turn off Monday Night Raw when uh, Sable came out. <laughs> Did anybody want to see the grind? That's enough. Shut it off, mother. Asuka <laughs> <laughs> uh, lost to Rhea Ripley, uh, leading to her identity crisis. Cool. Um, Rollins beat Bobby Lashley, becoming the number one contender for the U.S. title. Um, Bobby Lashley lost his mind. Great. Cool. I don't mind the Bobby Lashley, Seth Rollins, Austin Theory stuff. Me either. I like it. I think yeah. they're doing a good job with it. I think this Austin, this this version of Austin Theory is working. Yeah, 
Let's, uh, that's right. Pro Wrestling Joe says six year olds don't know wrestling sociology. That is true. No, no, they do not know wrestling sociology. Uh, Only how MG, you our producer, knows it. Yeah, he, we, he got fired today, though, by the yeah, way. Yeah, he's fired. So he's fired. Sorry, MG. I know you're watching. He, he's he, We fired him, and then he was like, I guess I'll just still watch the show. I love Rich, Rich came in. He <laughs> cut the tin can. That that He cut the, uh, because we get, that's how he gets internet, right? He sniff, sniff. Like, sniff, sniff. <laughs> boom, boom. Two, one, one empty can of beans in Michigan, and the other one is, uh, is tied to your house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, major stories coming out of Ring of Honor Final Battle. How did you like the show? I thought the show was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a great uh, show. I, I enjoyed the show. Athena won the Women's Ring of Honor Championship cool. against Mercedes Martinez. Martinez, <laughs> good match. Mercedes um, Martini. I like that. Uh, Wheeler retained or yeah, retained the uh, Ring of Honor Regained. Pure Championship. Regained? Yeah. Is it regained or retained? Regained. Uh, the Ring of Honor Pure Championship over Danny Garcia. Great. Uh, Samoa Joe uh, retained the television title over Juice Robinson. That was a good match. Very good match, yeah. I do but like seeing Samoa Joe wrestle. The problem, the problem with that match was it followed the Briscoes match. Oh right? my god! So the Briscoes and FTR had a hell of a match, and it reminded me of every single thing I love about pro wrestling. Me too. Yeah, me too. Like I would have. This would have been the ECW at home tape commercial, right? This would have been. Was, this would have sold that. Say that. Yep, yeah. I was just going to say that. It was very, like, I felt like those ECW vibes where it's like, yo, this is dangerous. Like, what are they doing to each other? Like, oh, this is real. You know what I mean? Like, it yeah. got to the point of the match where it's like, yo, this is real. <laughs> and I, like, you kind of, like, fool yourself into thinking that. You know? yeah, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, the the story within the match, uh, I, I'm not, it, it, I said this on Observer, right? Mm-hmm. It, the, the gimmick is the match, right? The dog collar yeah. match is the gimmick here. Yes. WWE could do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it will have a, a fraction of the impact that this match had. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Like, I'm not for blood and guts, but when it's done like this, it works. Because they told you the danger of being tied to your opponent mm -hmm. you know, by your neck. Uh, they they beat the crap out of each other. I thought it was. Somebody asked me, it's like, is this the best dog collar match you've ever seen? I gotta go back. Like modern history, yeah, probably. Yeah, definitely. Like I can't. Like someone's like, is it better than Valentine and what? I'm like, I don't know, man. I I gotta. I I can't compare it to that, but this was remarkable. Great match. Um, loved it, and also the blood told the story in this match. It wasn't gratuitous. You yeah. Know? Um, I do think there was like an eight year old kid in the front row who probably shouldn't have been there. <laughs> probably. Um, but loved it. <clears throat> Love that match top to bottom. They told such a great story. The end of the match was fantastic, you know, and also the Briscoe is coming to like help FTR at the end when the guns got involved it was a lot of fun. Um, and your main event, uh, Chris Jericho versus Claudio Castagnoli. With Claudio beating Jericho with the giant swing. Beat him with the giant uh, swing. Which made him tap out. And you know what? It wasn't the thing that drives me nuts. And this is just me. About the swing is that people are just counting. Yes. You know? And it's over. It, yeah. It, it wasn't 27 rotations. It was 27 seconds. Is that what it you is? Know, you know what I mean? I feel yeah. like because it's like people are just going one, two, three. This dude's like not even on a full rotation before like two and three get called. You know what I mean? Interesting. Okay. So, um, you know, Jericho tapping out was great. Also, Jericho losing uh, on Dynamite was great. Like this is. Yeah. He's doing some cool stuff, man. He's doing cool stuff. Uh, people were complaining. How could you tap to a giant swing? And Chris Jericho went on Twitter, started yelling at people and started telling them what a barbaric move it is. Yeah. Uh, very um, unique, unique finish. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm now here's the big question, right? So they had this show. They did not announce mm -hmm. a TV, right? A weekly TV show during the media scrum ring of honors, weekly TV. They announced will air on honor club, whatever this new version of honor club is. Yeah. Uh, they didn't give a lot of details because new Japan is involved in some way. Ooh. Uh, Tony didn't state, uh, when the start date is for this weekly TV show, but expect news to come out after Wrestle Kingdom. 
Pay-per-views, including Final Battle, moved to the service 90 days after they happened. They're still going to be on uh, BR. Uh, going to keep the existing relationship with Warner Bros. Discovery and Bleacher Report to keep airing pay-per-views based on the success that they've had so far. This was not a win. Um, there's a couple scenarios here, right? Like, why not put it on some other streaming service? I, I think because Tony's looking to bundle this. This is my opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Tony's looking to bundle this with the next TV deal because they're going to provide more content to Warner. I know mm -hmm. that they want a digital distribution platform with Warner. They also don't have next day rights available for any of like Dynamite. Where, where do you watch Dynamite the next day? Right, right. You can't. It doesn't exist. So I, these are all things that Tony wants to do. If he happened to put Ring of Honor on some channel for i don't know a year or put it on a streaming service for a year it may expose the weakness of the product it may you know give an idea to warner bros on what they can what their capability is when you kind of don't want to put that out there you know have a year run on on a fourth or fifth platform that nobody's going to watch i think because being behind honor club hides numbers a little bit you're putting it behind a paywall which definitely hides more oh yeah, um, yeah. this is a, is it stalling is it buying time maybe a little bit uh but you know a lot of this stuff was out of tony's hand hands because they're in they're going into a contract year with a company that is slashing everything key allies are now gone from the company from on every side of turner mm-hmm Mm -hmm. And this is a company that, you know, is looking to not pay as much. So I think, you know, for Tony to kind of hold on to Ring of Honor until the next deal, until the negotiation starts and put it on Honor Club. All right, that's fine. But where are you taping this? Right. Like, OK, so what are we doing? Are you going to tour on your own? I can't imagine you would want to do that without TV distribution to pay for anything. So you're going to piggyback on Fridays or you're going to piggyback on Wednesdays. Okay. They can they can go kind of old school with it and use Daily's place and tape like or like you know like like the original NXT, they taped a month of content like every other week, right? Yeah. Uh if they went that route, I'd be more than happy with that. 1 hour show taped Monday and Tuesday, air it at some point, you know, you have it in the can. Uh, it's self-contained, so it's not going to bleed over into like yeah. any live AEW stuff. You know, it'll I happen. Know. I, I, and, and should it be done? Should it be done? I mean, the proper way to do it really is have a TV product, and mm -hmm. you do smaller tours. You do like a TV taping, and you're in smaller buildings, mm -hmm. uh, and you have Ring of Honor be its own identity. Well, is it going to have the same impact if they're running in? The same, I guess, building that, that Dynamite is on? Will it just be a third hour of Dynamite? I mean, in people's minds, you know, or a second hour of mm -hmm. Rampage, really, with just Ring of Honor, you know, with different graphics? You got to look at all of this. So I don't know how they're going to present this. I don't know what the New Japan element is, but, you mm -hmm. know, it's a, it's a series of events that, that's brought them to this. I, I, you know, Tony said he didn't want to just slap this online. He wanted a TV product. Yeah. So we'll see where, where this goes. Interesting. Uh, you want to talk about Dynamite? Yeah, let's go into it. Great opening match. Uh, trios, champions, Death Triangle beat the Elite um, with the use of the hammer to Again. Nick Jackson's ankle. Uh, but the cool part comes where Kenny challenges him to a no DQ match. Uh, fall Match six would be Falls Count Anywhere. Match seven would be a ladder match if it came to that. So now the wow. Elite are down like a 3-1 a deficit. Yeah. Um, I, I would say this was the weakest one of their matches, which I guess you need to have one that's not as, you know, you can't do this every week, have those, mm -hmm. you know, five-star matches. All right, let's see how they, how they, how they do this. I, I'm very curious about this. The story has been that they have cheated to beat them every time that they've won, uh, and this is going to open the floodgates for... Uh, to even the playing field. All right, cool. I do think it's going to come down to match seven. Yeah, yeah, it has to. You know, like what, th these are these are guys, six dudes. I would love to see in a ladder match. You know. Yeah. Uh, the acclaimed were on their way to the ring, um, and they got attacked by Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, Jeff Jarrett, and Santam Singh. Oh, uh, the vortex. He said, "Scissor this, slap nuts." 
Jeff Jarrett looks like the love child of uh, Mark Twain and The Undertaker. <laughs> I mean, it's point. unbelievable that guy's on TV right now. <laughs> Every time I hear that song, that that music, man, I I can't. I I I, I get it's. I have trauma from it. <laughs> I have trauma he, from that theme. But he looks good, which is crazy. You know, like he's still like like jacked up. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff uses uh, guitar on Caster. Yes. Um, Jericho also said that Danny Garcia should have never lost a pure title and needs to shadow his elder Sammy Guevara. All right, cool. Uh, and Jericho said he's going to beat up a jobber later. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, Jungle Boy beat uh, Brian Cage with Prince Nana. Uh, the embassy came out to attack Jungle Boy, but Hook made the save. I really like how as soon as Hook shows up, all the other dudes are like, yo, we ain't fucking with this guy. Yeah, very well done. So... I guess you're going to team those two up? Yeah, why not? Jungle Hook. Jungle Hook. Um, hook Boy. Of, How about the, Hook Boy? <laughs> hook Boy. <laughs> the House of Black defeated the Factory um, squash match. Yeah. And here, I guess this is like news of the night. Uh, Action Andretti beat Chris Jericho. Hold on, but, started but wait. Out. Wait, you skipped something interesting, right? What did I skip? Nick Camarado. He got oh, yeah, misted yeah. By, by Julia Hart. Yes. So is he going to be poisoned also now? I don't think so. I think that was that was not. I think only Malachi has the power of the uh, the magic mist. Uh, the, okay. All right, and then and then we could go into uh, action Andretti. Andretti uh, looking like a squash. The crowd went nuts for this. I loved it. I think Jer good for Jericho for being like you know what I like this kid. He's going to be like the next thing. Uh, definitely like a one, two, three kid moment, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was a big upset, big win. Uh, he's an MCW guy, right? Is he? I believe so. Okay. Uh, he just made this kid's career. He beat Chris Jericho. He started training in 2019. He's 24 years old. Action yeah. Andretti. Uh, great look, great move set. Great move set, good body, young. Yeah. Uh, I hope he does unbelievable things. Mm-hmm. This kid mm -hmm. has seven thousand followers only on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> he, yeah, it, it that it, unbelievable. You know, it's it, it it's such like a good feel good story too. Sometimes you know you hear about. Oh it. yeah, but he was under their radar, you know, because he he was doing dark uh, elevation. I think no, he was doing dark. Uh, he's wrestled Brian Cage in the past, so mm -hmm. you know there were some some good feelers here but chris jericho apparently discovered him in october he saw a tape of him and he's like oh we, i want to do something with him i want to wrestle this kid yeah yeah good for jericho man good for jericho like losing losing to claudio tapping out to the to the spin and then losing to this kid like i think that guy's untouchable at this point yeah all right let's uh, let's see and uh do you think he ends his career in wwe i think he'll always go back yeah i think he'll end yeah. up there yeah. uh ruby soho beat tay Mello. fun match uh, and your main event, which I thought was pretty fantastic. Um, MJF beating Ricky Starks, defending the world title and the Dynamite Diamond Ring. Very old school match. Um, I do like how MJF just blatantly uses like a kick to the nards to yeah. win. Yeah, old school heel versus face. He, he, mm -hmm. uh, MJF hit behind the ref. A lot of heel moves here. Starks uh, shoved the ref away. MJF hit the low blow. Uh, and then afterwards, Danielson came out and chased MJF away. So now Great. he's setting up the program of Brian Danielson and MJF. You know, should should Daniel... I mean, I guess that you could do that in the next pay-per-view, but that's yeah. a long ways out. Yeah. You got a while I, to get there. I dig it. I dig it. Uh, I, I like that whole chase. There's a great uh, still of... Uh, oh, MJF I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian Danielson. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, Rampage tonight, Moxley takes on Sammy Guevara. Moxley's like, I think Moxley's trying to make Rampage his show. Yeah, well, he's doing the CM Punk thing. You know, that was Punk's thing. He would cut the promos and have the matches on Rampage. And I know John Moxley's now, you know, Mr. Uh, void. Rampage. Uh, Britt Baker versus Sky Blue. Wardlow will be in action. And there is a uh, eight man tag. Uh, Orange Cassidy, Chuck Taylor, Trent Beretta, and Dustin Rhodes take on the Butcher of the Blade, Kip Sabian, and Trent Seven. How do you feel about the addition of Trent Seven to the to the roster? Um, I'll, we'll see what he does. 
Uh, I I hope he does something positive there. I really thought it was going to be somebody else last week when Did you? Kip was like, "Check this guy out," you know. Yeah, he. Uh, when did they release him in WWE? He got released uh, this have, year. With, yeah, uh, with, it must have been like the NXT UK stuff. Yeah, like earlier this year. Yeah. Um, oh, September, next, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dynamite next week. Match five in the best of seven series between Death Triangle and the Elite. Uh, Jamie Hayter defends her title against Hikaru Shida and FTR take on the Gun Club. I'm sure that's going to be a, a great match. The Gun Club look like they remind me of like Station from uh, Bill and Ted 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Where like if you mush them together, they just turn into Billy Gunn. They're both like <laughs> equal parts Billy Gunn, which equal is Equal parts Billy, yeah. You can put them in. Combine them. They'll fuse into Billy. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently now fans are allowed limited cheering uh, at New Japan shows. So... You can cheer a catchphrase, counts, but no singing or orchestrated chants. Yeah, so you could you you can't be too lively, guys. <laughs> All right, you could have fun, but not too much fun. I don't want any yeah. of that screaming. No All screaming. Right, whatever. Yeah. Weird. Cool. Yeah. Very strange. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> go ahead. No, nothing. Very strange. The uh, the New Japan Pro Wrestle, uh, Wrestle Kingdom card has been released. I think this is like the tentative card. I feel like there's going to be more stuff added to this. The, uh, this card? Go down it. Yeah. Let's see what we yeah. got. Uh, you have two opening matches. The first being uh, Ryoi Oya versus Bolton Oleg as an exhibition match. Have you seen Bolton Oleg's ears? Straight up cauliflower. Oh, ears. my God. It's It's terrifying. Uh, you get the King of Pro Wrestling 2023 New Japan Rambo match. Those are always fun. Uh, the Antonio Inoki Memorial Six Man Tag with uh, Togi Magabe, Satoshi Kojima, and Yuji Nagata versus Tatsumi Fujinami, Minoru Suzuki, and Tiger Mask. I thought they were going to do something different with Suzuki because he's announced he announced like this is going to be the end of Suzuki Gun. Yeah, he said it's it's over for Suzuki Gun. So interesting. Yeah. Uh, you got the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Titles. Francesco Akira and TJP defend against Leo Rush and Yo. That's an interesting tag team. I yeah. also thought Leo retired. <laughs> uh, he he has multiple times. <laughs> uh, IWGP Women's Title Carry defends against Tam Nakano. This might be where you see Sasha Banks Mercedes or however she's going to call herself. You know. So what does she do? She, she Kyrie wins, and then she comes over and she, you know, congratulates her, and then points at the belt, and he's like, "I'm coming for this." Yeah, she could also probably keep the name recognition, like you know, like like uh, adding the one Z to Taz. She could be like Sasha Banks with a C, Banks, like B -Z -Z -Z. Yeah, B N K Z. Great. Is she allowed to call her the boss though, or did WWE? I don't know. Mercedes her? boss. She could be Mercedes boss. Yeah. Uh, she trademarked a whole bunch. I'm, I, I can't. I can't remember what they were. Uh, FTR defends their IWGP Tag Team Titles against Yoshihashi, your favorite, and Hiroki Goto. Um, that's going to be a great match. I think FTR is dropping those belts, though. They have to. Yeah. They'll. I yeah. mean, that's the beginning of the of the story, right? Where they're dropping all the titles. They'll drop the AAA yeah. titles next to, and then they'll they'll be titleless, and then they'll go after the AEW ones. Yeah. Uh, New Japan World TV title, Ren Narita versus Zack Sabre Jr. to determine the first champion. That's going to be good. Uh, never open weight match. Carl Anderson defends against Tama Tonga. That's going to be a lot of fun. Like we said before, I think there's going to be some kind of like bullet club something. Something, right? Yeah, they got to do something. Because even though like I think part of the the weird deal that Anderson and Gallows have is that they could technically still be referred to as the bullet club because they, they've said that on WWE television. They, they, they've alluded, to, have they, yeah, they have said that they are, that they, they were part of the Bullet Club, but they can't, you, they can't identify as being in the Bullet Club. They right. They in the club, though. They could, like, say, like, oh, they're the OGs, you know, whatever they called it. Right, right. OG um, Club. This is going to be an interesting match, too. You have uh, Muda, Tanahashi, and Shooter versus Naito, Sonata, and Bushi. I mean, so this is Muda's last uh, match in New Japan. Not his, not his last Tokyo Dome match because he has that his retirement is in the Tokyo Dome. So this yeah. is the last match f 
for New Japan, I guess, in the Dome, which very cool, you know? Very, very cool, yeah. Uh, you have the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title match. Taiji Ishimori defends against Takahashi, El Desperado, and Master Wado in a four-way match. That's going to be great, as usual, you know? Uh, United States title, Will Ospreay defends against Kenny Omega. I think Kenny takes that belt. Back. I think so, too. I don't know why. Yeah. I think so, too. I think so, and he's going to show up on AEW TV with that belt, you know? Um, and, like, a little side note, too. I think we we heard some stuff from Kota Ibushi this week where he basically was like, I'm not going to sign with anybody. I think I'm going to make my own wrestling federation. I mean, you know, like, but he's done this before. Like, he, when WWE, mm-hmm. he, he's always said he doesn't want to sign with anybody, and that's kind of been the detriment to his run, right? Because that yeah. guy should be the world champion anywhere. No, absolutely. I think absolutely. he likes his freedom. I think he likes, to, you know, he's not driven by that. He wants his freedom. I get it. But it's also a detriment as to, you know, yeah. we're not seeing him on TV. And that sucks. I know he's, he's banged up. I mean, he, yeah, he yeah. hurt himself too. But uh, he's a fascinating guy. Nutty guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know what? Do your thing. Do what you got to do. Did you ever see him on, uh, there was a Japanese game show where he posed as a woman? No. And he fooled like a panel of judges and like he had like long hair, like make up the whole nine. And then they were like, you guys are wrong. Check this out. And then it sh- they showed like all the Noah and New Japan stuff oh my God. of him just moonsaulting everybody, you know, very I'll send it to you. It's, it's very yeah, interesting. He's an interesting dude. Uh, and your main event, IWGP World Heavyweight title, Jay White defending against Okada uh, does okada regain the title or does jay white hold on to it longer um i i gotta be honest i'm not really invested in this match because you've seen it a ton of times yeah i i've seen it a ton um i is it gonna be a great match yeah hell yeah it's gonna be a great match but i've seen it so much like they got it the ping ponging has been tremendous here so yeah <laughs> um, I think Okada maybe takes it, but then we're who's who's set up for to be the opponent for Okada? You know, you can't the go back to that. You know who? Naito, <laughs> Sonata, uh, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. <laughs> I mean, you could do Bushi, but I mean, yeah. we've seen this Tanahashi. <laughs> we've seen this. Yeah, I think uh, I part of me thinks that Jay White retains, um, and it it'll. It'll further the Bullet Club stuff. I feel like they're really putting more another concentration on Bullet Club again. Like um, Under Armour released like Bullet Club tracksuits. Oh, that's like cool. official. Like it, they look awesome, by the way. <laughs> um, so who knows, man? I think that's like one of their babies, and they'll never like let that. I think management still has that vision for like that faction. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you want to do some questions? Yeah, let's do a couple, and then we'll get out of here. I'm dying here. All right, cool. So uh, we got a few Super Chats here. If you want to Super Chat us, we'll answer your question uh, immediately. If you want to Super Chat us, you can help. Uh, it'll it'll make Andrew feel better. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is from Schreyer. Hello, my sexy Matt Men friends. With Hello. Festivus around the corner, what are your fondest memories? And were you persecuted like George in Bayside? Yes. It originated in Bayside, Queens, Festivus. And the Costanzas <laughs> were ran out of town. They had to mm-hmm. leave because they did not That's understand the Festivus poll. Uh, Festivus is a big part of my life. Rich and I dance around the pole, and then we tussle. Mm-hmm. We oil each other up, and then we tussle around the pole and air our grievances. Our grievances are year. mostly about Coco, though. It's always about Coco. And MG. Definitely a lot of grievances about MG Geek. Just oil up and tussle. I think MG's on his roof right now holding an antenna in like a rainstorm trying to get his internet back. <laughs> this will fix it. It's like an earnest uh, comedy. The, uh, this is another super chat from Schreyer. Um, can Andrew start doing potato ratings as part of the new and improved Matt Men Only fans? Uh, yes, I, we could start doing that. <laughs> right. We could start rating in potatoes. Rate my, you could do a rate my potato. And have my people potato. send send pictures of their potatoes to you. And I just rate the potatoes. I like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from Dylan. 
1399. Thanks, man. Sup, guys. With it being December, it reminds me of my favorite December pay per view, Armageddon 2000, which was the six man Hell in a Cell. Who would be your dream six man Hell in a Cell match? Who? Uh, current roster? Let's go current roster and then let's go like wild. So in that in that match, by the way, that Hell in a Cell, it was Angle, Rock, Rikishi, Austin, Hunter, and The Undertaker. Kurt Angle defeated okay. all of them. I would have current, if we did a six-man Hell in a Cell with the current roster, it would be Roman, Cody, yes. Seth. Yes. Yes. Roman, Cody, Seth. Uh... Lesnar, Lashley. Roman, Cody, Seth, Lesnar, Lashley. You need one more. Um, I need one more. Sammy. I think it's got to be. A guy. Oh, Sammy's good. Sammy. Yeah, Sammy's there great. Uh, current roster, I would go. <sighs> Damn, six man, six mans is tough, but Roman for sure. Six mans, six mans. Uh, KO. Okay. Drew. Uh, okay. Sheamus. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sheamus, um, Rey Mysterio, and Austin Theory. All right. That's cool. So you get a little bit of everything in there. You know, I feel like putting Brock Lesnar in, in a cage is a little trite because you know it's going to break. It always does. It always does. You know, uh, of like all time, like Mankind, Undertaker, Austin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, like it, you'd have to go with like those guys, like like classic Kane. Um, uh, here's another nine ninety nine from uh, Cadillac Carson. Thanks, man, for the new Jungle Hook tag team. What do you think of Tony buying the rights to the song Bare Necessities for their entrance theme? Happy Festivus for the rest of us. Thank you, thank you. I would love that if it was done by Action Bronson. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love that. That would be amazing. Um, this is a good question from the Shadow Ranger. <clears throat> Imagine your parents are single. Which wrestler in character would you set them up on a date with? Who would you set up Fred with? Oh, man. Who would I set up? <laughs> Listen, I like Naomi. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. He'd be they would make Naomi. a cute couple. They'd make Listen, a very cute couple. I like, but. Okay, that's what I literally, that's what my dad says. That that is the exact Freddie impersonation. <laughs> Listen, man, right. like his talent, you know, like he's does this. Listen, uh -huh. I like a woman with butt, and then he'll like do this. You know what? I'm setting my dad yeah. up with Naomi. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> Tamina, Tamina. Both of them. Why not? Why not stop? Why stop at one? Why so, stop at one? With, you know what? No. Fred would Rhea Ripley. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'd Listen, man. She's strong. <laughs> <laughs> That's my father's <laughs> accent, too, by the way. It's Listen, great. It's great. I needed her to help me change the tire. This bitch grabbed the car and lifted <laughs> it. <laughs> Literally what my father would say. Accurate, accurate. Fred Very Fred. accurate. Whatever. Also, whenever I bring a uh, a lady or a female friend or my wife to the house, your dad will say the same thing, which is, where have you been all my life? <laughs> which is hysterical. There was a point that my father would watch wrestling, and he would ask me every time if the Usos were Jamaican. Yes. And yeah, then I would yeah, tell yeah. him no, and then he would say, oh, yeah, because they're Guyanese. And I and I just gave up, and I'm like, yes, they're Guyanese. The Usos are Guyanese. Uh, I'm gonna correct myself here. Yeah. I'm, I misspoke. It's Daylon. Oh, Daylon, Daylon. Prada. Daylon. Sorry, I call Daylon. Him Dylan. Dylan. I like Dylan. Dylan. You gave Dylan. him. You gave him the whitest name. Dylan. Does the CIA have you pushing too many pencils? Um, <laughs> Great movie. Is, the, yeah. This is from. Uh, let's do this one last question, and then we're good. Yeah. Uh, this is from. Balor Club. Happy Friday, boys. With the reports of Ric Flair and Tatanka being booked to appear at Raw's 30th anniversary, what other legends would you book for the show? I do the Dudleys. Um, from that era, Ken Shamrock. Have Kenny show up? 
The Godfather, <laughs> right? Oh, definitely The Godfather. You know The, the Godfather. Godfather. Um, who else was there? Austin. I mean, you you want to get you want to get Austin X Pac. You get yeah, him. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Road Dog will show up. Uh, you know, it, it seems like they're doing like an <laughs> Attitude Era style thing, right? This year. Well, these Finally. are the legends, right? Yeah. So, Mc, like, McFoley. McFoley. Yeah. You could do Foley. Like it, it, Taker Foley could show up. Oh yeah, like, uh, like, uh, like Youth Pastor Undertaker. Youth Pastor Undertaker shows up. That's a that's a new gimmick, huh? Yeah, he went. From, get, he I, went from a, 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 a zombie cowboy to an, a bike to a, a cultist to a biker, back to like a dead guy, and then a little bit of a demon, and then and then a, a youth pastor. And now it's like I'm just Mark. I'm just Mark. Hysterical. I, I I get a kick out of like all the Undertaker stuff because it was so kayfabe. You know what I mean? Like yeah. now I don't when like you him see, talking. Like, why not? It makes you uncomfortable because he's makes a real me, guy I, with real I problems. I don't want him to be a real guy <laughs> with real problems, dude. You just want like the dead man. I want the dead man. The American badass. It's different because like when you see Stone Cold, he's like the same guy, right? I uh, yeah. I mean, he's an extension of himself. But like you, you watch that guy. You're like, he's not putting on spooky makeup. He's a bald dude that wears jeans. You know, right? And what? that's it. That's. That's his life. Whereas, like Taker is like they're both big Texas guys, and Taker yeah. is like that's you know they they probably have very similar personalities. And when you see Taker with his kids and wife, you're like, what's happening? It what's like throws happening? you for a loop. It does. Yeah, he's like a normal dude, mm-hmm. as normal as could be. Yeah, like us. <laughs> you wanna you wanna wrap it up? Yeah, uh, let's do one more. If All right, hold on. Wrap it up. One second. Uh, this is from the Kingsman. Oh, geez. Hold on here. Um, is the rumor of Roman working both nights at WrestleMania true? If not, what's the current plans for the main event? Also, what are you guys' excitement level for the rumored Gunther versus Lesnar match? I mean, that would be cool with Gunther and Lesnar. I, I guess you could yeah. do it at Rumble. You could set it up there. Uh, it's, a, yeah. it's just big dudes, you know. Uh, it, it, it is kind of like a weird dream match for some people. Big so, dudes doing big dude things. I, I, I can't say that. Obviously, that idea was pitched. I don't know how far along in the idea of planning it, it, it is, but mm-hmm. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see Roman do two nights. No, I think it takes away from the second night, no matter what that match is. Yeah, you know? and like it, I think it, it, it does. If you're gonna put this guy in a big position, it makes sense, you know, where like he's finally getting beat or whatever. But it does take away a little something if you have this guy like main event two nights in a row. You know, they had a great one, formula. Go ahead. One with Cody and one with Dwayne. One with Cody, one with Dwayne would be awesome. Right. <clears throat> but I, I don't know. What's Cody's time frame? You know, who else is it going to be? We've seen Roman Lesnar a million times. Um, I mean, it, 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 they have to do Dwayne. I, 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 I'm saying this because they, they don't have that opportunity anymore. This is yeah. it. They're out of they're out of time to get that match done, and if there was ever synergy to be built and to make this happen, it's that XFL that's launching this year. Uh, Rock schedule is much lighter for the XFL schedule for the first year yeah. at least. Uh, they are going to be in early April for WrestleMania. Uh, could be a big you know lead in uh, as far as promotion for XFL playoffs. You know, they, they really need to get the XFL off the ground. They want to get XFL off the ground. And obviously, uh, marketing this and using WWE as a, as a backbone for some of your viewership by having The Rock on TV uh, building up to this yeah. makes a lot of sense. I, However, what doesn't make sense to me is how do you... You're going to have to figure out what you're doing with Roman and the title. Does the title come off of him and he faces The Rock? Does he go in there facing The Rock with the title? Does he have both titles facing The Rock? Does he have one title? Does he drop it to Cody? Does Cody take one title? There's there's so, so many, many variables. different variables here that we're going to start seeing it in, you know, uh, six weeks. Yeah. In six weeks, we'll have the beginning of the, that puzzle being put together. Wild, right? I will say, I will say, here's a little bit, Tibbet. You guys should watch SmackDown tonight. Yes. Because there's something happening the following week, correct? 
Well, apparently the setup for something cool is going to be tonight. Is it tonight? Uh, well, something cool. <clears throat> I'll just say there's something cool happening in the next couple of weeks. The groundwork is starting tonight, apparently. Okay. So, and, and apparently it's going to be a shocker, which, hey, listen, I'm all about that. I know what it is. You're going to show uh, up and take your ding dong out. That's it. All right. What are we doing? True. Let's go. All right. Let's, <laughs> all right, get, let's out get out of here. here. Guys, uh, I don't feel good. I'm sorry. Uh, and that's it. Goodbye.